Hey guys, Anthony Scott, Toy Hype USA. I'm here at PowerCon 2019 with the four horsemen! Woo! Well, <laughs> two of the horsemen, I should yeah. say. Uh, Corn Boy Eric and Eric, two of the most talented guys in the toy business. What'd you One say? One of that's... us is, at least. No, that's not accurate. That's... <laughs> One of us is. I was going to ask you if that was accurate. <laughs> but not this one of us. Okay, this one of you. Would you say you are? Hey. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> one second. Got customers up here. We're doing a, like a little interview okay. thing here. Hold on, guys. Hey, guys, we're back with the Four Horsemen. <laughs> so let me kick off what's on everyone's mind. Thundercats. How excited are you that it's back? Very. Incredibly it's, exciting. It's... It's what people have been wanting for years. Originally, when Super 7 said, okay, we're doing Thundercats, we want you guys to sculpt them. How did that get started? Did you guys get like a um, say in how to update them, stuff like that? Uh, a little bit. I mean, they. what happened was they started working on it back when we were doing the uh, Masters of Universe Classics figures, and they had taken that over. They also wanted to take on the Thundercats license, so we started doing the work for them for that, and it was pretty much just kind of coincided. And then they kind of decided on the, what the design aspects that it had and that kind of thing. So, okay, but yeah, it's, I mean, just like everybody else, when Mattel was doing them and that ended, we were super bummed out because we loved working on those figures. Yes. And then when it was a possibility that Super Seven was going to be picking it up and they wanted to sell it along with the Masters of the Universe classics that they were doing or, or Ultimates or whatever. Uh, and we were excited again and then when that didn't happen we were kind of bummed out so we're super excited that they're going ahead and moving forward with that now. That's very exciting uh, what's going on. So Super 7 was saying uh, characters like the Luna Tanks are going to be a possibility with their 30, between 30 and 40 characters that they've already confirmed coming. Uh, how excited are you guys to work on characters like the Luna Tanks? I don't think they've ever been done before in official toys. I don't think so, right? Uh, yeah. Not as far as I know. There was a prototype. Yeah, it was. Made, but that was as far as it ever went. Icon Heroes came close to doing mini mates, but I, I spoke to them at the time. They didn't think they would sell enough of them because hmm. they were a bit too obscure. But I, I think they should have tried it. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. You never know. So Throw it at the wall, see if it'll stick. So my question to you guys, uh, characters like that that have never been done before, how, how will you go about, um, you know, taking on the challenge? Would it be just like the same as the two classics? Uh, you know, as far as do, what? As far as um, keeping it accurate, going with the uh, accuracy of the cartoon? Or? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the key, is trying to make them look cool and updated to the today's standards with lots of articulation and stuff but also keep it in mind that these need to look like the cartoon when, yeah. when people's but, but with a slight bit of realism too I mean these are three-dimensional representations of uh, animated characters on a cartoon so you know they're gonna be bumped up a little bit but yeah we want to keep as close as possible as we can to the cartoon actors and these are the guys to do it I mean who else can do that they've proven it for years with uh, multi classics so let's jump with turtles now super seven turtles I have to say I love Baxter Stockman awesome. I think he's gonna be uh, he's best of the wave very excited of the first wave, he's my favorite too. By yeah. Far. So, what made you guys go with a bit more bulkier interpretation of him? Because he looks maybe a little bit more bulkier than he did on the TV show. Well, that's that's really the defining factor of these, this line of figures is that it's not based on the TV show. Um, you know, over the years, the the cartoon versions have been done several times. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's currently figures out there that that are cartoon based and so we were huge fans of toys always more so than the cartoon which which is the case a, a lot of times that was the way we were with, with masters um and so in looking at how to approach the line what can we do that would make it unique and different sorry guys the announcement uh will probably be taken away from the microphone a little bit but we're, what we were wanting to do is to figure out how to make it different, exciting, and what would make a great toy. 
and the, following those action figure designs, it, it was just the perfect opportunity to go back to that inspiration. Right. And really just dive into the what the, the uniqueness and weirdness of those figures. Be, mm. And that's what, you know, you, Baxter Stockman is getting a huge reaction. And I think that is great because that's where the line is going to go. Because, you know, the turtle... It definitely looks like a, a toy turtle, but yeah. but for the most part, you've seen the turtles over and over. You've seen mm-hmm. Splinter. You've seen the foot soldiers. Yeah. Baxter Stockman in a form like this, you haven't seen since the early 90s. No. And so, you know, I'm thinking of all these characters like uh, Muckman and Joe Eyeball and Wingnut and Screw Loose and Ray Filet and yeah. uh, these, these characters that have just wild designs to them and yeah. all, you know, Things, so many details on them that they couldn't even paint back in the day. Yeah. Um, and so it's a matter of taking that stuff and just running with it as far as we can go with it. And just, I think we're going to get some great figures out of it. Yeah, Playmates Toys really did a great job on the vintage line. They really, uh, I think, set the bar pretty high as far as character selection. Absolutely. Giving you yeah. guys a ton of choices. I mean, this can go on for years. And at, uh, even at $45 a pop, I think that enough people will buy it. And it will keep going. Yeah, you know? yeah, because I think the the pacing that they're looking at with the four pit figures per wave, four times a year, it's um, you know even at forty five dollars a piece, it's not that aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, you know, considering what people will spend on a Marvel Legends wave, um, you know, twenty times a year, <laughs> however many times they come out with a, a wave, I think it's uh, you know it's reasonable to think that, that, uh, that that's not going too fast and, uh, and too much. Well, that's good. I hope, at least, because we want to make yeah. more figures. Yeah, uh, obviously. So, you guys worked on Conan too. Yes. Right? How did that go? How did that come together for uh, Conan? Is that something you guys, is that something Super 7 pitched to you? No, they just said, hey, we got the Conan license. Do you guys want to do it? And we're like, Absolutely, we're huge fans of the the movie, and we're like, sure, let's let's jump on board. And I mean, the figures turned out better than we expected. Yeah, Super Seven really liked them. The uh, people who have seen them, as far as we've seen online, and people here at PowerCon seem to really like them. So we're excited about that one. Yeah, it, it looks great. I love the. Uh, realistic style, you know, uh, just like the Motu movie figures that are the final classic figures right. coming out, I guess at the end of the year. I believe so. Right? Yeah. Something like that, maybe early 2020, I forget when. But those look great, and I hope to see more out of that. Yeah, we do too. I mean, we're really um, surprised at and happy with the response they've gotten. We knew that they were good looking figures, but there are a lot more Conan fans out there than we thought. And the characters yeah. that at least the three that they've revealed this weekend, they're all characters that we can do multiple variations on. Like the mm. Conan that's in the booth is from the uh, Conan the Destroyer line, and yeah. obviously, you know, they want to do Conan, the one from Conan the Barbarian. The uh, other two guys, Rexor and Thorgrim, they're in their costumes at like the final, or no, when they first show up in the Conan movie, and there's like two or three other costumes during that movie alone that we can put them in. So, yeah, we can do a lot of, a lot of variations just on the three that they've shown so far. So hopefully this will get a long life. We'll be able to see a lot of different uh, characters in that line. I'm very excited for that. So let's jump to uh, Motu Origins. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this is PowerCon. We're going to talk about Masters for a little bit. How excited are you? All new line, fresh start. Uh, are you happy with the... Uh, with how, the direction it's going in? Absolutely. Like? It's, it's a fun line to work on. Yeah. yeah, we love it. So what exactly are you guys doing with the line? Because I tried to get some information from Mattel, but there seems to be, I couldn't get um, exactly what you're sculpting. Right. I couldn't get all that uh, information. Well, we're not them. we're not sculpting all the figures. Like the, the ones yeah. that were released uh, for Comic-Con, the, the um, exclusives that were at San Diego Comic-Con, we didn't work on those. And the Battle Cat that they just revealed this weekend, we didn't get the chance to work on those, but or that one. But on the other figures, we're doing things like we're taking the original iterations of the figures 
and doing digital alterations, digital scans, things like that. And like the faces, uh, we're slightly altering them to give them slightly different expressions and stuff. From the 80s counterparts? Yes. Okay. And uh, so what figures are you sculpting? Because I did hear you guys did uh, Tila and Evil Lynn, mm -hmm. for example. Are they, are they, did they show those? Yes, yeah. those are out there. Otherwise, I wouldn't say it. Right. No spoilers. That's, that's what I, when you said, what are you sculpting? I'm like, uh, I don't know if we can talk about what we're sculpting right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, what's on display now? I'm on not... display over there, um, yeah. everything except for Battle Cat and the two that were released at uh, okay. Comic Con, we, we worked on. All right, and what about the Motu Minis? Is that from you yeah. guys? Yeah, we worked on those okay. as well. Those, and we're so happy those are coming yeah, back because yeah. that was another one that when Maddie Collector started, I mean, stopped doing those, we were really disappointed because we loved that yeah. line. And I'm so excited. They're, they're blind box, and I'm not a huge fan of blind box stuff, but I know yeah. there's a lot of people that are, and I think that's going to create a lot of excitement in retail for those too. I think so too. You know, and I spoke to them about the blind box, my concerns, because other companies like Fisher Price, Diamond Select Toys, they stopped the blind boxes because mm -hmm. people were opening them up at the store. Yeah. You know, there was some theft going on. Right. So I said to them, uh, what about little codes or, you know, some way to identify the character? Yeah. Fisher Price does that with the... Imagine X. Yeah, the Imagine X. And I love that because... I do too. I, I collect, like, all the monsters from that wave. And I can go in and just look on the back of the package. There's a little corner... And if you don't want to, if you're like into the whole blind bag, blind box thing, you don't have to look at the number and figure out what it is. You can just be surprised. But for somebody like me who really only wants certain ones out of the line and doesn't want to go through the trouble of doing a lot of trading and stuff, I love that they have that on there. So, yeah, that would be a good suggestion. I would like to see that done as well. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as, far as the theft goes, they're going to come, be coming that little plastic uh, Castle Grey Skull, and that yeah. will probably be in a box as well or wrapped yeah. or something. So it's probably not likely that those are going to be opened up in the store. Hope I mean, not. Yeah, I hope not. It would be tougher to do than uh, just something in a little cardboard box or a little bag. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. so let me ask you this. Uh, you guys sculpted Snake Mountain, right, for okay. Super 7. Uh, are, are you are taking part in it, in the, uh, the progress at the factory? What's going on oh, with that? No, no. I mean... They'll send us photos and things, okay. that kind of thing, to like look over and, hey, do you guys see anything here? But they they can handle that completely. They're going to they're do a great job with that set. Okay, so now it's, you guys pretty much have nothing to do with it now. It's sculpted, it's sent over to them, yeah. and they took it over yeah. from there. I okay. wouldn't say nothing, because if they ever ask us, like you said, send us photos and say, what do you guys think about this? And obviously, we'll, we'll jump in and get involved with that. But no, they've got it now, and they're they're cranking through it. Okay, a couple more questions about Origins. Uh, Mattel is looking to do, or hoping to do, a lot of the characters uh, from the 80s. Uh, I think there was like 130, 140 yeah. different characters that, yeah, you know, I'm sure they're going to do mini comics and stuff like that, all those characters, stuff like that. What is the, the one, if you had to choose one character that you would love to capture, in this style, let's say they uh, ask you to do modular. I don't know, you know? <laughs> this is not confirming that. But how would you tackle a character like that in that style? That's a good question. I didn't, I didn't hear the, I heard the, oh. oh, sorry. Modular. <laughs> oh, modular. Like if, uh, if we the, had to tackle that kind of a guy, how would we approach it? In the origin style. I mean, I, I guess if it's really, somewhere in between what we did with classics as far as the added articulation um, you know you, I think we would probably use some of the similar mechanisms that we used yeah. in that because it it worked both as a modular figure but also maintain the articulation but of course the, the going completely back to that original look and sticking as close to the, the vintage uh, just design and sculpture. As possible. Yeah, like um, break apart like he did back in the eighties and the classics uh, figure, and just like uh, make, him make them interchangeable. Yeah, maybe yeah. you could buy multiples. Yeah, so stuff the, like that. The, you know, with bending elbows and ball joints in the shoulders, but still with the popability of, of the original. Okay. My hopes for that line is that it does well enough that we'll get to a point where like with classics where 
able to do characters that weren't released as toys at one time. I would love to see, like, I would love for us to be able to do our take on what a classic version of, like, the Shadow Beast, mm. with that articulation and stuff. Oh, it'd be so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where I think yeah. there's, like, for the, you know, because I think the stuff that, that's going in now, like, it has that broad appeal that I think for a lot of the, the, the real long-time Masters of Universe fans to, uh, I don't know, put a character like uh, like Icer, Fangman, mm. something like that, since you're now back <laughs> to, to the complete, this retro style and on a vintage-looking card and all that, to get some of these characters, I mean, similar to what we did with Super 7 with, uh, with the Shadow Weaver, um, and some of those other characters that, that people have wanted for years and wish they would have made back then. Um, I think there's a lot of excitement for those types of characters. Yeah, absolutely. I think the more characters they do, the better. I, I think um, it would be nice if they followed uh, classics a bit with uh, character selection, maybe do characters that uh, classics never got to. Eventually, but right now they're just focused on the 80s line, which is great. You know, I think once all that or most of that is done, maybe we'll see a character like Icer. Yeah, something like that may be a good like show exclusive or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's where, where, you know, you're really hitting that focused fan base more so than at a Walmart where yeah. most people probably would say, who is Icer? Yeah, there's that too. The one thing that I would like to see, uh, I know you guys have something to do with, but I think an animated series would help, uh, you know, Masters of the Universe animated series to really bring the kids engaged. I don't know yeah, if the movie's absolutely. gonna be enough. It absolutely would. I mean, you, we've seen the success of the She-Ra cartoon on Netflix. Yeah. I mean, it, everybody was, was like skeptical at it, about it in the beginning. And the first season did well, the second season did better, now the third season it's blowing up and there's a lot of really cool uh, references to past Masters of the Universe iterations and characters and stuff in the third season. It's just getting more and more popular, so yeah. I really don't see why they couldn't do something like that with a uh, He-Man. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think they confirmed anything yet. I think right now they're just focused on she as uh, far as I know, but uh, I think eventually they, they really should. Absolutely, it should. Because uh, I think uh, He-Man Master of the Universe has uh, just as many or more characters than uh, She-Ra. I mean, to me, that's where He-Man lived. Like, yeah. it was the animated series is what really, to me, put He-Man and the Masters of the Universe on the map. A lot of people liked the movie, and, and you know, the toy line was great, but the mass appeal was because of that cartoon. And to catch, capture that kind of like a lightning in a bottle type thing again would be would be fantastic. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. So let me ask you guys a question too about uh, legions. Do you think that more homage characters? You have the trap draw character, the panther character on sale or sold out for the day. But do you think more homage characters? We never said line? that was trap draw and, <laughs> and panther. <laughs> It's well, no, it's, you it's never. It's purple and cor chrono. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, well, because uh, I Masters forgot their universe, names. <laughs> Masters of the Universe homage. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I mean, I, for PowerCon, we will always, as you know, we will always come up with homages to do at PowerCon, and, and we'd like to do it like if it's there's a certain theme that goes along with Can we it. Show them? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh yeah, grab those and show them. I'm sorry, I so interrupted you. Everybody knows you. what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at them. So this is, to be more accurate, non Traptra, non Panthor, <laughs> Prona and Purplor. I forgot their names. You'll have to forgive me. I'm looking at all these figures. No, I don't. I, I only remember Otho. Oh, that's Otho. That's the only Everybody name I have. Otho. Yeah, but well, a lot of these names are not easy to pronounce. Yeah. So I have to go to you and like, how do you pronounce this? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's Prona. Yeah. Well, we have to do that sometimes too. Yeah. So, very nice. These sold out, but hopefully you guys pre-ordered on the Store Horseman. <laughs> you completely missed Jim hanging out behind you, didn't you? I did, yeah. <laughs> See, it would not be PowerCon without you threatening me in any way, threatening to slip my throat. <laughs> Something like that going on there. But yeah, with like, well, we're probably getting close to, if not over 200 
Mythic Legions characters now, like at least 150. Wow. I mean, it gets easy to forget yeah. characters' names at this point, so it I does. don't blame you for that. Yeah, thank you. Especially when they're supposed homages of other characters. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, we like to do things for, for conventions where we do what we call debut releases. They're not exclusives. They're no. debuts. People who pre-order them mm -hmm. are guaranteed to get them. People who come to this show, as you saw yeah. yesterday, half the people standing in line didn't get the figures because yeah. we bring super limited amounts to the show. We um, have the factory pushed forward and finished production on the small set that we bring here. And then we have them air shipped over here for the shows, which is very expensive. Yeah. And that's why the price point is just a little bit higher per character. And we make sure that um, you know we have cool things for the, the different shows that we do. And, and PowerCon is no exception. We like to have something that you know, if people see it, it kind of has a familiar feel to it, or as you put it, an homage. <laughs> yeah. So, let me ask you this. What about Thundercats, now that that's back? Because I know I asked you guys Thundercats a few years ago when it was still canceled. But now it's back. It's not a sore spot for people. What do you think of, like, a, a Lion-O or a Panther? Or uh, maybe even a Mumra uh, character in Legion's type? thing i don't know i mean you know the th the difference between motu and every other thing that we've ever worked on is that this is a, a a property that we've done an unbelievable number of iterations for and it's it's a property that you know from the beginning we were doing masters of the universe has just kind of become a little bit of a part of who we are so paying homage to that and giving respect to the the characters and the designs and the creations and and the, the people that we've worked with over the years by, you know, making our characters but kind of colored in colors of some of those classic characters, I mean, it kind of makes sense. If it's, you know, like the DC stuff that we worked on, or if it's like you just mentioned Thundercats, mm -hmm. it doesn't make quite as much sense as Master of the Universe. And okay. really, if you get right down to it, we want, you know, Mythic Legions to be its own thing that we put out there. We're only doing these... Uh, versions because of PowerCon and Mythic okay. Legions, you know, if we have a choice to make characters, we want to make characters that we, you know, came up with and designed that are specifically for Mythic Legions, not some fun like little one-off thing for uh, for a uh, convention. Okay, that that's being fair. said though, there's plenty of customizing opportunities oh, yeah. where people yeah. could easily take the, some of these characters and make a cool lion -o or Panthro or Maybe, like I said, maybe a mum. Yeah. A little ingenuity. I'm, I'm sure someone will eventually. There's so many talented people out there that do this. It's, it's amazing. It, it really is. And they should do it full-time work like you guys. Yeah. I mean, you that's know? what we've been looking at. He might across the, yeah. the aisle from us. And he's got a full table full of amazing customs over he there. He does, yeah. That... They don't look like cups. Yeah. No, they don't. And there's there's a lot of people out there that that are doing that. Um, and and a, lot, so a lot of people that are specifically just Mythic Legions heavy customizers. Yeah. Um, and it, that's for us. That's exciting to see what people take with our creations and then what they bring back to it. Because um, there's just an unbelievable amount of creativity and. Um, you know, it in turns inspires us, you know, the next time around when we're creating characters. Yeah. And they just, between the, the toy photographers and the the uh, the websites and the customizers and just the, the, the community at large, um, you know, th that's so much of what has helped this line grow for us because... Um, we can spread the word so much, but when you've got, you know, real people out there that, that love the line, um, you know, that that's the, the best way to spread the word. Because yeah. it, it's, you know, for their love of the property. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, we can't, you know, we really can't thank the community out there enough. Yeah, and two of our, our favorite cust uh, customizers, they post on Instagram a lot, and they're part of uh, various Mythic Legions... Facebook pages. Okay. One of them is Nikki Nicole Cheney. It's N I K K I N I K O L E 3704 on Instagram. And the other one is Jeremy Gerard. Those of you who watched the recent G Con, 
might have seen Jeremy on the show. Um, what is that? Is that like Mythic Customs? Yes. Yeah, it's just Mythic Customs, all one word on Instagram. Okay. You guys got to check those out because they do some amazing customs. And there's fans all over that do customs and fans who just do like photography of our characters where they they pose them and they build little sets and they have amazing lighting and stuff and it just looks so real with the photography that, that they do. And we just love all that kind of stuff. That's great. Yeah, definitely so many uh, talented people. So if there's uh, anything you guys want to add about multi Origins, Thundercats, anything in particular other than saying, guys, please buy them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're thankful that people buy them and we, yeah. we really appreciate not just Mythic Legions itself, obviously, thank you for that, because with every release, it just keeps growing with leaps and bounds, and you know, hopefully we'll take over the planet with Mythic Legions one day, but also for like the properties that we've worked on over the years with Mattel, with yeah. Super 7, um, and, and just the opportunity to get, get to work on a lot of properties that we've loved since we were kids. I mean, it's an absolute blessing, and we wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for all you fans out there buying the stuff and we can't thank everybody enough it's awesome that's right here you go right from the horseman and of all course, right thanks to val for putting on another yeah. amazing uh show here i we always say powercon is our favorite show of the year um it's just, and then this year, we, we, it's moved to Anaheim. Yeah. It's, so much it's larger. Bigger. I, we yeah. never so thought it could be better. Um, but it's it, it's, a, it's another fantastic year. Yeah. The thing about PowerCon that's so much different from every other convention we've ever attended is that even though it's growing, it's pro this room's probably twice as large as last year, right? It seems like it. It's, yeah. it's a lot bigger. Yeah. It's, it's huge, and there's so many people here. But it's like you walk into a gigantic room full of best friends. Everybody's right. so friendly and so welcoming. And it's just, I mean, there's a lot of love at this convention that you just don't see at other conventions. It's just, it's all yeah. camaraderie here. It's fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. I think uh, the, said, the same thing could be said about a lot of the smaller conventions compared to, um, you know, San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. Stuff like that where uh, Hollywood has completely taken over shows like that yeah but this is just about one thing this is like uh, some of the core fan bases here and people are just really enjoying the toys they're yeah. in their element really and I, I think that's a big part of the success of the show yeah. and why it's not as chaotic and for people stuff yeah. like that just a nicer atmosphere I mean to be other in. than mythic legions fans that we've met in the past couple of years Masters Universe fans are the most passionate fans I've ever yeah. seen. I mean, they just absolutely love this property with all their heart, and it shows when they come here to this show. Maybe someday there'll be a Mythic Legions convention. You, know, you never know. Be nice. <laughs> hey. Mythicon! I mean, that's, well, maybe well, that's is, what hey, G-Con is. Yeah, there's G-Con. Yeah. What are you I guess that's about? what G-Con is. <laughs> but maybe there'll be a physical one that fans can come to. Right now, it's just all online. But well, you guys you can host know. one in New Jersey, right? No, we don't have enough... I mean, it'd be cool. Yeah. I guess we'd have to find out how many people would want to come and then see how big it yeah. could get. We could probably find a spot to do it. I don't know. A little hotel somewhere? In a uh, room? That'd be awesome. Yeah. Joe, Joe knows how to put on a toy show. He can yeah. help us put something Yeah, together. Joe Vettery, the guy that runs ToyCon New Jersey and was on the recent Decon. Yeah, I met Maybe him. Nice help guys. Us put, the, put that together. Yeah, there you go, guys. Hopefully. Let these that'd guys cool. know. <laughs> you know? Maybe um, instead of G-Con... Uh, G-Con can expand to include the public, too. Who knows? G-Con 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> it could George be A-Con, named everyone. after me. <laughs> okay. I think I George, think George who? <laughs> George is out. George who? George who? George Gasper we'll, we'll who? We'll call it A-Con. Anthony will have to be there every time. That's right. I'll have to oh, drive wait, down. Oh, wait, A-Con. That name's already taken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll have to drive uh, 350 miles to be there, but I'll do it. You did it for G-Con. I did it for G-Con. 